Hey everybody, Zach again at NewTutorial.com. Wanted to come in and do a quick video on the Ken Ham Bill Nye debate. I've had a lot of people ask questions about what, what, was what was said in the debate and what I thought and my thoughts were and to address certain topics that were given in the deba debate. Overall, I think Ken Ham did a pretty good job. Uh, I think that he missed some good opportunities to uh, really get back at Bill Nye on some of the points that he made. I think both candidates expelled most of their ammo in the first 30 minutes of the debate uh, when each one was allowed to give a 30 minute introduction uh, to his side uh, of, of the debate. And so I think uh, Ken Ham did a pretty good job. He, he brought in a lot of scientists, uh, videos uh, of scientists who believe in a six day creation. And I think that's a good thing to do. It shows that, that there are scientists out there who believe in a young earth. And that's very helpful, I think, to the audience. And Bill Nye, uh, like I said, I think he's, he expelled a lot of his uh, ammo in the th first 30 minute presentation that he was allowed to give. And a lot of these topics that he brought out were, were not addressed, were not countered by Ken Ham, I think, in a, in a productive way. And so uh, it left a lot of people asking questions. What about this? What about that? And so I kind of wanted to do that now. We're going to address three topics in, in order to keep the video short. Uh, three topics uh, that, that Bill Nye brought up and I think that were completely overlooked, really, and, and not, not um, answered in a, in a good fashion. So I wanted to address those now. Let's just take a look. Here is the first clip uh, from Bill Nye. Uh, my scientific colleagues go to places like Greenland, the Arctic, they go to Antarctica, and they drill into the ice with hollow drill bit. And we find certain of these cylinders to have 680,000 layers, 680,000 snow, winter, summer cycles. How could it be that just 4,000 years ago, all of this ice formed? Yes, how could it be that, you know, in 6,000 years that this many ice layers can form, uh, hundreds of thousands of ice layers, uh, over 680,000 layers that they're counting? Bill Nye is talking about the National Ice Core Laboratory located outside of Denver, Colorado. Okay, and uh, here it is right here. You see that uh, uh, these people, what they do is they go out and they, they drill for ice in all these different places, Greenland being one of them, and they take these ice cores and they take them back to the United States and then they study these ice cores. And these ice cores uh, have different layers in them. And you notice the .gov uh, email, here's the website address right there, and you see that it's a .gov address. Uh, so it's paid for by your U.S. tax dollars, this organization, or this agency, this Na U.S. National Ice Core Laboratory. And if you look at this, uh, you, you see them, you know, they're drilling for the ice. They're using, they're, they're going all over the world and they're, and they're drilling for these ice cores and they bring it back. And, yeah, you know, that's your tax dollars at work there. And so what happens is uh, they come back and they study these ice cores and uh, the winter cores, uh, of the snow, uh, they say, uh, forms the, the, the white layers, that's the snow, and then the summer layers, when it melts, uh, hardens, and then it forms the clear layers, which show up dark in your photo right there. So the dark layers are, are, the, are, the, are the summer layers, and the white layers are the, uh, the winter layers. And so they claim that the layers represent annual rings. Okay, so what they're saying is that each one is a summer, winter, summer, winter. In fact, this has been disproven. It's been completely disproven a number of years ago, which, I, which amazed me that Bill Nye would bring this up in a debate and on national, with national exposure that he could so easily uh, be, uh, um, this, this, this point could be so easily argued. It, it's, not, it's not summer, winter, summer, winter. In fact, they've taken it, the National Ice Core Laboratory has taken that claim off their website. The only place you'll find that claim is on other websites, like here, here's, a, here's that link there at the bottom. It's from the earthobservatory.nasa.gov site. They're still holding to this. They say here, and quote at that link right there, in a general sense, the thickness of these annual layers tells us how much snow accumulated at that location during the year. That is completely false. It's a lie. There was this thing called the Lost Squadron. Uh, back in World War II, a number of P-38s were flown from the United States to, to see action in the, in the European theater during World War II, and they crash landed. They went through a storm over Greenland uh, on their way to Europe, and they crash landed in Greenland, and actually there was a book written about it on the rescue attempt of these of these uh, airmen, and it was kind of a miracle on how it all happened. It's a great book if you if you ever get a chance to look it up, it, you can find it on Amazon. And so this lost squadron uh, was lost there, and and they they went later uh, to go recover one of these P-38s. And what they did, they found one of these P-38s located uh, using ground penetrating radar. It was actually under 250 feet of ice. 
So in 48 years, from the time that these crash landed until the time that somebody, uh, was a person from Kentucky, a rich guy from Kentucky, decided he wanted to go get these P-38s, he went out there thinking he's just going to find them, dust off the snow, and, and fuel them up and fly them home, or at least take them apart and put them on a ship and, and, and take them home. Well, it wasn't that easy. It, t it was under 250 feet of ice, and they had a real hard time finding these things, and they were about to give up when one of the ground-penetrating radar teams actually found one of the P-38s. And so what they began to do is dig down and melt down the ice to get to uh, these one of the P-38s, and they brought it up piece by piece. They had to take it apart in a huge cavern that they had melted all of the ice from down below, and they took it apart piece by piece and brought it up. And it flew a number of years later. It was completely restored, and it, uh, you can find all kinds of information about that P-38 online that they recovered, and it did fly again. Uh, and so here you see a picture, a color photo of the recovery hole clearly shows many hundreds of layers present at the site. They melted down with this thing called the gopher where they melted down through the ice and uh, the eyewitness accounts conclude that there were many hundreds, many hundreds of layers of ice leading to the wreckage. So why so many hundreds of layers in just 48 years? How is that possible? I don't understand. According to Bill Nye, there should be, you know, only 48. Or if it's summer, winter, you know, only 100, less than 100 layers, you know, two for each year. Summer, winter, summer, winter. But it wasn't. It was many, many hundreds of layers. And the eyewitnesses, uh, if you read about it, said they didn't even be begin to count the layers. There were too many of them, so why count them? They didn't even think about it at the time. Uh, but there were many hundreds of layers, more than they could count. And so... The truth is a single snowstorm can produce many layers of snow. A simple change of temperature will change the density of the snow and thus another layer will appear. What you're seeing here is a photo of a snowfall, uh, one snowstorm, <coughs> excuse me, that happened. And this is a picture of a wood pile. And you can see the layers of snow. This is from one snowstorm on a wood pile. How many layers is there? That's not one, that's not many winters. That's not many years. It's one snowstorm. And look at all the layers that are on that wood pile. And look at this photo. Check out this photo. This is another photo. You can find these photos easily on Google. I mean, every every winter you see people uh, digging out their driveways, and so you can find people blog about their adventures or, where, or or their lives, and they show pictures. And I found these most of these pictures on people's blogs, and it shows this guy here was digging out his driveway. Um, and how many layers can you count in this photo? There's lots of layers in that photo. That's one snowstorm, folks. One snowstorm. You know, up in the north, northern parts of our country, they can get a few feet of snow in one snowstorm. And so here, here we have a guy digging out. Here's a shovel in, in the picture for reference. And then you have this picture. This is my favorite. This is a woman, uh, I believe in Wisconsin, who had an ice storm, and she's trying to uncover her car. And she, it was an ice storm, and in one storm, eight layers of ice and snow in one storm. How many layers can you count in this photo? I counted eight. Eight layers, and I enlarged the photo. And I highlighted a part of the photo to make the layers a little more visible. And so you can see eight layers in one storm. Eight layers of ice. Folks, these, these, these layers do not represent summer, winter, summer, winter. In fact, the U.S. National Ice Core Laboratory, like I said before, understands this and has taken that information off their website. And, and they know better now because people have brought this information to them. So they're no longer claiming what is a lie. Uh, other websites are. But Bill Nye, being ignorant of this fact has used this in a national debate and just really made him look foolish. Um, and so I, I just thought I'd show you that. And so here's another layer uh, picture here with some layers. This is actually uh, over one winter season, uh, the blog uh, said. And you can see just many, many layers in there over one winter season. This is not summer, winter, summer, winter, folks. This is snowstorm. Any variation of the temperature, any variation of the temperature whatsoever will change the, the look of the layers We'll, we'll put new layers on top of the ones that are already there. Any change of the temperature will do this. And so it just there are many examples of this online. And so the fact that Bill Nye does not know this uh, makes me think he doesn't research his topics very clearly, especially before going to a national debate. Um, I think that was very foolish of him. Let's take a look at our next clip. Now, when we go to the Grand Canyon, which is an astonishing place, and I recommend to everybody in the world to someday visit the Grand Canyon, you find layer upon layer of ancient rocks. And if there was this enormous flood that you speak of, wouldn't there have been churning and bubbling and roiling? How would these things have settled out? Your claim that they settled out in an extraordinary short amount of time 
is for me not satisfactory. Well, I'm sorry that that's not satisfactory to you, Bill, but uh, maybe this will be. Look at this photo. This is uh, an experiment that a school class uh, took, put together where they took a jar, a glass jar, uh, full, half full of dirt, half full of water, and they shook it up to see what would happen. And guess what? Guess what happened? It settled into layers almost instantaneously. This is something that each of you, any of you listening, can try. You can go out, find it, get a glass jar, get a, get a, fill it halfway full of water, fill it halfway through a di th uh, of dirt that you find on your property or, or around your house, uh, different types of dirt. Just go around different places and grab some dirt to fill the jar halfway full, shake it up, and watch what happens. The dirt will automatically settle into layers. This is called hydrologic sorting, okay? Or sometimes people call it sedimentary layering. It happens very, very quickly. This can happen in a worldwide flood. See, this is observable, demonstrable science. What Ken Ham was trying to tell Bill Nye, there is observable, demonstrable science that you can observe, test, and demonstrate. That's what real science is. And this is an example of that. This is something that you can test yourself. If the Bible is true and there was a worldwide flood, and we know from a fact that we can take dirt in a jar with water, shake it up, and it'll settle immediately into layers just like this. Well, then shouldn't we see layers all throughout the planet? Well, guess what? We do. The, what we see in, in, in nature you know, correlates directly, uh, upholds the truth of the Bible, upholds the truth of the Genesis account. There was a worldwide flood. And things did settle into layers and you can do this. This is observable, demonstrable science that you can do at home with your family. And we have done this. You can do this just like the school group did here. You can put the dirt in a jar with water, shake it up, and it'll settle very quickly, very, very quickly into layers. Because things, when things settle in water, they settle according to density. Okay, and that's why you have different fossils in different layers because the density of those fossils, of those animals, uh, are different than the other animals that are in different layers. There's different density, and so things are going to se uh, settle based on their density in different layers. And it's, it's the same with all sediments. It's going to settle according to their density, and you see these right here. Uh, it's demonstrable, observable science right there, blown away uh, uh, Bill Nye's argument that, uh, that, thing, that layers cannot form quickly. They absolutely do. Absolutely do. Let's take a look at this next clip. This is our last clip. And by the way, if this great flood drained through, through the Grand Canyon, wouldn't there have been a Grand Canyon on every continent? How could we not have Grand Canyons everywhere? <laughs> well, Bill, we do have Grand Canyons everywhere. They're not called Grand Canyons. In fact, there are a lot of canyons that are bigger than Grand Canyon all over the planet. Uh, let's take a look at some of them. Uh, if if they're going to be if the, if the flood drained through the Grand Canyon, shouldn't there be Grand Canyons everywhere? Well, how about the Black Canyon in Colorado? How about the Blyde River Canyon in South Africa? How about the Copper Canyon in Mexico? What about the Fish River Canyon in Nambia? What about the uh, Indus uh, Canyon in Pakistan? Or the Kings Canyon in Australia? Or the Matka Canyon in Macedonia? Or Skippers Canyon in New Zealand? Or Tara River Canyon in Montenegro? Fact, folks. The fact is, there are canyons all over the planet. In fact, if you go to Wikipedia, it lists 47 canyons, some of them bigger than Grand Canyon, that are all over the planet. And it even gives you the continents that they're on. And so, according to Wikipedia, there's 47 Grand Canyons all over the planet. And even a, a larger number of gorges listed uh, on that page as well, all over the planet. Absolute evidence that a worldwide flood took place. If, if our if we are correct in assuming that the Grand Canyon was created in the flood, which I believe that is true, then yeah, there would be canyons all over the planet. And the fact that Bill and I doesn't know this boggles my mind that he would go that ill-prepared before a national audience and claim something so ludicrous. You know, I mean, they should like revoke, he shouldn't even be called a science guy anymore. I mean, just do some basic research. It took me like five minutes on Google to find these pictures and to find uh, this information. In fact, the Indus Canyon in Pakistan is the largest canyon in the world. It's not even the Grand Canyon. In fact, if I was Pakistan, I'd go before the United Nations and say, hey, you know, false advertising. Ours is the Grand Canyon. But, you know, Bill Nye doesn't know that. Either he's just, he has this inability to research things, you know, properly before he goes before a national audience or he's lying. I mean, what is it? Is he that ho holding to his... Here's the deal. Bottom line is this, folks. People will lust after the flesh. 
And, and, and this is the point that I think that uh, Ken Ham should have made. In the last days, there shall come scoffers. And they'll scoff over a number of things. One of the things they're going to scoff at is the flood, according to Second Peter. And so this is what Bill Nye is doing. He's scoffing at the flood. But there's, he's scoffing because he has the lust of the flesh. He has a lust of this life. He, you know, he doesn't want to live life the way our Creator tells us to. You know, and so uh, being a set apart, peculiar people, uh, he doesn't want to do that. He wants to live life on his terms the way he wants to live life. And to acknowledge that there's a God would mean that he would have to change some things in his life. And so really that question then comes back to us. You know, are we going to acknowledge his existence? Are we going to acknowledge that there is an almighty, powerful God who's created everything in six days the way the Bible says so? Or are we going to make up ways in life to live our own life and just ignore that existence uh, until a time where, you know, it comes time to pay the piper? Uh Uh-oh. You know, that's not a position I want to be in. So, folks, I want to leave that, leave it at that. I'll leave it kind of a short video, but just to respond to some of the things that Bill, ridiculous things that Bill Nye has said during this debate. And there were many others, the whole light thing, you know, millions of years. Guys, it lists 17 times in the Bible that the Creator stretched forth the heavens. Well, if he started here, and from here he stretched forth the heavens, that means light started here. And so there's no problem explaining billions of light years away that there are stars out there that we can't that we can barely see and so somehow the earth the world took millions of years to create billions of years to create the universe took billions of years to create so that light could reach us makes no sense if he stretched forth the heaven the heavens from here out well then the light started here and was stretched out that 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 tells you why we can see those stars that are that far away and it declares the glory of our creator i'll leave it at that go home read your bible Thanks.